Welcome to Unity Chapel Church, located in St. Louis, Missouri. At this time, if you can, for me, at the bottom of your screen, like, share, and comment this worship experience we have for you today from our own elder, Kenan Peoples. What a word we have on the way. I will read the scripture today, Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has a clean hand and a pure heart, he who not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob Salah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, he lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord hosts, he is the King of glory. Survive. Put your hands together for us at home. Share, like, and comment this great worship experience. But we have something in store for you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for today, oh God. Thank you for keeping us, oh God. Thank you for watching over us, oh God. God, as we go through this service, oh God, let your glory reign on us, oh God. Let your anointing flow through us, oh God. God, fill this temple, fill the houses, oh God. Fill the cars, oh God, right now to those who are listening. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Cover them with your grace, your mercy, your blood. In the name of Jesus, oh God. And God, we thank you, oh God, for continuing to protect us from seen and unseen things, oh God. God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. We came to bless the name of the Lord on today. So we will let our praise rise and we will give God the glory. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King Rise among us, let it rise. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, you can put your hands together, rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, say that the glory of, let the glory of the Lord who rides among rise us. Among let us. the glory, the glory of the Lord who rides among rise us. Among do us. what you can to do, the Jesus. Who rise, 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 let it rise. And then we will say, let the songs of the Lord, let the songs of the Lord who rides among rise us. Rise let the songs us. of the Lord. Let the praises of our King rise, let it rise. 
We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, say we give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. All of the glory. We give you glory. And all of the honor. We give you glory. You are worthy. We give you glory. Yes, you are worthy. We give you glory and honor. We give you glory. For you are worthy, Jesus. For you are worthy, Jesus. For there's nothing like you in all the earth. So we give you glory. So we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Say we give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, let's do that one more time. Oh, hey. Say we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. But there's none like you, Jesus. We praise your name. For you are worthy to be praised. For we are worthy to be praised. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Jesus. So we bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Put your hands together. Oh. And we sing, oh, oh, let it rise. Come on, help me say, say, oh. you believe it come on and bless the name of the Lord if you believe that he died for you come on and bless the name of the Lord hallelujah we love you Jesus for praise shall always be on our lips hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus we bless your name Jesus we bless your name Jesus for you are worthy of the glory you are worthy of the glory. We bless your name, Jesus. 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 Have I say we bless your name, Jesus? Because we love you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 wherever you are, say hallelujah, 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 no matter the circumstance, hallelujah, no matter the situation, hallelujah, 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 we bless the name of Jesus, for he's worthy, yes he is. He's worthy, 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 he's worthy. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, just on today, I lift up my hands and I say, Thank you, Jesus, for keeping me in my right mind. I bless your name, Jesus. We bless the name of the Lord for he is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus.
right there where you are from your home. I dare you to just open your mouth and give the Lord some praise right there. The name of the Lord is a strong time when the righteous run in and they are saved. I wish I had a few people that could praise. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Oh, hey, glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for keeping us in our clothes, mind. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you for protecting us all through the pandemic. Great is our faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Thou changes not. Hey, I thank you for not changing. You didn't switch up on me. Thank you. Well, hey, you didn't switch up on me. Thank you. Your faithfulness is still good. And we bless you and praise your name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The name of the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And we thank the Lord, hallelujah, for another opportunity to come into his presence. Listen, if, if, the, if, the, if the worship didn't move you, hallelujah, I don't know what's going on with you. Maybe you need to get checked out. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I appreciate all of you that have taken out the time to worship with us on this occasion. And we're going to go right to the word of God. Found in the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 19. And I'm going to get in and get out. Hallelujah. But I have a word from the Lord for you. From Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 19. Father, we thank you for this moment and this time to speak to your people. And I pray that you would decrease me, Lord, all the way. That those that are watching on this, on the other side of this screen, Father, that you would allow them to see you hide me behind the cross. Give me a word for the people for the season and the time. And I thank you and I praise you even now in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 19 reads as this. For many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of adoption again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And here's my key verse, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 19 says it one more time. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations of the sons of God. I want to preach for the next about uh, 13 to 18 minutes. Uh, just type it in the comments. We're waiting on you. Just touch somebody in your house, in your car, somewhere. We're waiting on you. The need to be self-sufficient in your identity in this particular season is so imperative. As you look throughout social media and as you look through the news, the main thing between each person and each person you talk to on the street is that people are suffering. And people are looking for answers to the world that they live in. And the answers are not in a book. The answers are not in a seminar. The answers are not in a webinar. But the answers are in you. And you've got to get in your mind that I don't offer a solution. I am the solution. When I step into the room, your life automatically comes better because I'm there. And it's not because of me. It's because of the God in me. The solutions are not in things. They are in 
and people. And because we don't know that, we treat our lives with such contempt. When the truth is, somebody's destiny is being halted because of your disobedience. And you don't want to hear that because you don't want the responsibility of being accountable to your purpose. But every now and then, you need to get some uh, people in your life to help you look at yourself and help you to realize that until you get it together, somebody is going to keep going through the same cycles that they're in. Somebody is waiting on you to get yourself together. They can't walk in purpose because you're not in place. And that's the type of people that we see in the world today. And not just in the world, but we see in our text there at the church in Rome. They are people full of potential, but they lack direction. The day of Pentecost has already happened. Here and, and understand that the uh, epistles of Paul are not written in chronological order. Technically, the first epistle written by Paul was First Thessalonians. So Romans, although it's right after Acts, is not the first letter that Paul wrote. But either way, the day of Pentecost has already happened. The people of God have had an encounter. But when you look at Romans 1, Paul says, I need to visit you and impart spiritual gifts into you. Because Paul knew they needed more than an encounter. Mm -hmm. Because the encounter is for you. But the impartation is for the people you're called to. And that's what the problem is. Many of us have become so lost in the pandemic because we rooted our purpose in Sunday and Wednesday. And when that walked away from you, you didn't know who you were. But the truth is you've got to come out of encounter idolatry. Some of us have become church junkies and we use the highs of the message and the quickenings and the organ and the four, five, sixes to get a high. But the truth is you've rooted your personality, your purpose in an encounter when you need an impartation. An encounter will make you sweat, but an impartation will change your life. An encounter will make you shout, but an impartation will challenge your character. You need more than an encounter. And so Paul says, I know you're gifted, but you need more. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he, ex he illustrates the need for more by in implementing the idea that you need a consistent relationship with the Lord I just need you to put in the comments really quick I need a consistent relationship uh, and that's where the fight comes in there because sometimes I've got to fight between what I know and what I want uh, that's where the real struggle is at uh, I know I shouldn't do this uh, but I've got to fight between what I know and what I I won't. And the truth is, is that is where we fall short. And when you know you have purpose, messing up is harder because you know better. It's easier to condemn yourself because you know you set that goal for yourself. You know you set that boundary for yourself. And it's easier being pissed at yourself when you set the parameter. But that's why Paul said in verse 1, therefore there is no condemnation to those who are after the spirit and not after the flesh. Can I tell you, you can fall as long as you get up with God. Mm -hmm. and, that's what, and that's what the first part of Romans 8 is about. Romans 8 is not about your presentation. Romans 8 is not about the way you dress. But Romans 8 is about sanctification. And many of us don't really know what the word sanctification is. Because we use the term, I'm sanctified. But the word sanctification means the continuous deliverance from sin. Sa oh, sanctification is not a destination. It's a process. And when you say you sanctify, it tells me you stop sanctifying. <laughs> Uh, but what the truth is, I'm sanctifying myself every day. And the truth is, here's the truth. We cannot please God walking in our flesh. Mm, you, you're not sanctified. You're sanctifying yourself. It's the continuous deliverance from sin. And that's why Jesus came, according to verse 3 of chapter 8. It said, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak to the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He came in the flesh for sin and condemned sin in the flesh. I came to tell you that Jesus made a way of escape for you already he defeated sin on the cross so if sin ain't my problem if God ain't my problem if the devil ain't my problem the last culprit to the issue is you you are your greatest issue you are your greatest enemy and can I tell you that's your problem you 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 are your greatest issue and that's why Paul said when I would do good 
Evil is always there. And he wasn't talking about a devil. He was talking about something in his flesh that wanted and to keep him to keep him from pleasing God. But that's why verse 8 says, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You can entertain God, but you can't please him. You can work for God and still not please him. Oh, please don't get it twisted that you can do a whole lot of church acts and God still not be pleased but I wish I had a few people on this line that could just put in the comments I want God to be pleased with me I don't care if the people don't like it and the problem is we've allowed the pews to pressure us into performance it's pew pressured performance oh it's a good book to write I'll write it later but the truth is preachers have become entertainers because you don't have substance and because you don't have substance you beg the preacher to perform and because the preacher got to perform we can't get to the text so we play with your fancy we tickle what you want to know but the truth is God is saying I'm looking for people that want to please me glory to God and so can I tell you something we know that you cannot please God in your flesh hear me hear me hear me hear me clearly hear me clearly hear me clearly and I got to watch my time well let me prophesy to you and tell you don't let your flesh murder your future in the first degree I said don't let your flesh murder your future in the first degree don't let your flesh oh, oh, oh don't let your flesh give a preemptive premeditated first degree murder on your future and that's the truth your flesh will send you to hell and not come and it will ruin your future but I need you to understand somebody's waiting on you to get your act together somebody's waiting on you to get your mouth together somebody's waiting on you to get your attitude together and the longer you keep playing in your flesh somebody's dying oh, yeah. while you having playtime people are dying in their sin dying in their mess and then you say well I'm not supposed to save them but he told you in Matthew go ye therefore into all the world uh, baptizing them I won't say all of that uh, but the point is you need to go somewhere uh, the problem is what the pandemic did is pushed us outside of the church but here's what verse 11 says but if the spirit of him Raise Jesus up from the dead dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. And I know we understand that word to be quickened to be a hikamasha. But the word quickened there means to take forcefully from the powers of death. I need you to understand something. I want to talk to some folk that used to be dead. Oh, glory to God that I used to be in this. But God brought me out. But God didn't deliver you for nothing. Don't cause your deliverance to be wasted because you're walking in disobedience. Good Lord, it help me. I wish I had some people that can say, he brought me from blank to take me to blank. He brought me out of this to bring me to this. He didn't take me out for no reason. And so he said, if the spirit of God dwells in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus is going to raise you. He said, by his spirit that dwells in you. I need to reemphasize this. I know this is not deep, but hear me by the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. We're in an intellectual age that emphasizes education and emphasizes intellectuality. And I'm all for a degree. But at the end of the day, you need something in your flesh that controls you your life you need something in your heart that shuts your mouth before you can post it the Holy Ghost will take your thumbs and snatch them up to where you can't move oh glory to God you need something in your flesh to keep you under control but understand here that God saved you for a purpose he saved you for a reason he quickened you out of the hands of death and verse 12 says therefore brother we are debtors not to the flesh but to live after the spirit on the law and I need to tell you on today that when God snatches you out of your past you don't owe your past nothing the reason why you can't move 
into your future is because you keep going to your past, paying a debt that was already settled. When Jesus was on the cross, he said to them, it is finished. The term there, it is finished, is a Greek word meaning to less time, meaning your bill has been settled. And I wish I had a few people in social media land that can be honest and say every time I try to move forward, I've got some people in my past telling me, don't you forget what I did for you. Don't you forget who I was to you. Don't you forget all those nights I drove you around. Don't you forget all those days I paid your bills. But that's why the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature. Oh, all things are passed away and all oh, all things become new. Look at somebody and say neighbor oh neighbor get rid of your past. Paul said looking unto Jesus the author the finisher of your faith. Understand this verses 1 through 13 Paul talks about the sin he talks about the flesh but verses 14 through 27 he switches gears and he calls us sons of God verses 1 through 13 calls us sinners but verses 14 through 27 calls us sons and verse 14 says for as many that are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God I'm so glad that although I've sinned time after time that God didn't disqualify me from being his son I messed up many times but I'm still his son I made some mistakes over and over over and over over and over but he still calls me son when the man ran from his father the prodigal son he ran back to open arms and I wish I had some church people that can say I made some mistakes but he loves me yes yes he does but verse number 14 says for as many are led by the spirit of God they are sons of God Paul said the sign of your sonship is your submission can I tell you in this season you got to obey obedience is better than sacrifice that's what the old saints say when your spirit speaks to me when my yeah, yeah, with my whole heart, I'll agree. I've got to go now and I've got to quit, but I wish I had some people in here that says whatever God tells me to do in this season, and my answer will be yes Lord yes I wish I had some people that says got another yes Lord in my soul come with me yes to your will yes to your way yes I'll obey yes every day somebody say yeah 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 
you got to obey. You can't expect God to bless you when you still haven't done what he told you to do in 2020. But verse 15 says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the adoption of the spirit. Wait a minute. God, he adopted me into his family. He adopted me into the royalty of the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. Can I tell you something? When God adopted you, when he went down to the headquarters of hell, meant with the devil himself. He said, Satan, I know mankind is full of sin. I know that Adam and Eve did the original sin. Satan looked back at Jesus and say, yep, they lie, they cuss, they drink, they fornicate, they gossip, they backbite. Jesus leaned back in the chair. He said, know what? I know they do all of that and some more. But guess what? I still want them. And can I tell you, when God adopted you, he knew what came with you. He knew that you would be a mess. He knew that you would be a liar. He knew that you would be a cusser. The songwriter said it like this. I, I, I was sinking deep in sin. For the peace for sure. I was deep sinking deep in sin. Sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard, he heard my cry, and from the waters he lifted me. I made a mistake, but he's still my father. I bet some people, but he's still my father. I've been a mess, but he's still my father. I've made some mistakes, but he's still my father. I walked out on him, but he's still my father. I lied on him. But he's still my father. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, he's still my father. That's what Jesus said. When you pray, say, our father who art in heaven. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not. Oh shucks, I didn't got it happen and lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father is the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. He's my father, but look at here, verse 7, verse 17, wait a minute, verse 17, I talked about the process of sonship, I talked about the process of sonship, but verse 17 talks about the pain of your purpose. Verse 17 says, hey, it says it like this. It says, for if you are heirs of God, if you join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we might 
also be glorified together. And I want to talk to a few people that think your purpose doesn't have pain. But it's not purpose if it isn't painful. Because if I don't feel it, I don't want to be in it. If you can't hurt me, we ain't close. And God says, if your purpose is going to be sure, you will have to endure some pain. Your salvation is free. But your purpose will cost you. But I came to tell you what Paul said in verse 18 for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed if you can just hold on in this season we've been made endure for a night but grab your neighbor's hand I said, grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, it will be all over in the morning. You got to go through this testing season. You got to go through this lonely season because when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And that's why verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to be revealed. Can I tell you something? Virgil, come here. I've got to get out of here. Come on, Virgil. Do me a favor. Get my shovel. Verse 19 says that the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God to be revealed. That word manifestation means the honor of a dig up. Paul said the whole world is waiting for you to dig up your gifts. The whole world is waiting for you to dig up your purpose. 2020 try to bury you in depression 2020 try to bury you in self-loathing but this year I'm digging it up every gift that I slept on in 2020 you told me you're not smart enough you're not big enough you're not anointed enough and you let I let you bury my gift but in this year I, 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 I'm about to dig it up I'm digging up that new business I'm digging up that new opportunity I'm digging up that old relationship I, I'm digging When they ask you, what are you doing? When they see you, post your business. When they see you, start the job. And they ask you, who do you think you are? What are you doing? Tell them, I'm digging. I said, tell your neighbor. I said, tell your neighbor. I'm digging, I'm digging it up, I'm digging it up, I'm digging it up, I'm digging it up, my joy, I'm digging it up, my purpose, I'm digging it up, I'm digging it up, so what, you don't like me, so what, I mean that ain't your clip, if God be for us, He's more than the world against us. I got God on my side. If you're digging it up, I dare you to praise it.
Yes, I'm digging it up. You tried to kill me. Come here, Joseph. What you meant for evil. God, God, God. He turned it for my good. He turned my mourning into dancing. My crying into laughter. My sadness into joy. He turned it. Yeah, no, no, no. He turned it. If you believe God is turning it, I don't got a lot of time, but I dare you to put a praise on it. I dare you to put a praise on the turning that's coming to your life. Praise him. Keep it right there. You're gonna live to see God do it. I don't care what they said, what they did. Yes, you are. Oh, come on, give them 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. You want to praise him. They're waiting on you. That job is waiting on you. That calling is waiting on you. That family is waiting on you. They're waiting on you to get that degree. They're waiting on you to get that job. They're waiting on you. The White House is waiting on you. Congress is waiting on you. Health care is waiting on you. You playing around. The boss said praise me and I'll accelerate. Hey! He's gonna turn it. He's gonna turn it. Hey! Wow. I prophesy your weight is turning down. God's gonna decrease your weight. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, He shall renew your strength, and you will mount up. Yep, sure. Yes, sir. They're waiting on your purpose. They're waiting on your call. Get up and do something. Get up and get the movement. Get up and a proper school. Get up and a proper the promotion. They're waiting on your gifts. They're waiting on your calling. But I hear. The Lord say, the wait is over, the wait is over, the wait is over. You're going to pop up that job, and they're going to say, you who we've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah, you're going to walk in that job. Oh, they're going to say, you who I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for somebody like you. I've been waiting for your expertise. And guess what? You're going to go in there and not have the adequate decree. But God, I'm doing you a favor. The favor is on you. The favor is on you. The favor is on you. You don't need luck, but you got favor. It ain't the look of the Irish, it's the favor of God. Hey! It's not the look of the Irish, it's the favor of God. It's the favor. It's 
It's the faith. It's the faith. It's the faith. It's the faith. It's the favor. As a prophet in God's church, I lose acceleration over your wait time. I see in the Holy Ghost, for many of you that have gotten into like virtual lines, they'll send you a text and say, you've got 79 minutes left in the line. You got 69 minutes left. You got 59 minutes left. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, for those of you that will obey the Lord right now, God said you got two choices. Give God your best offering of praise, of energy, of money, whatever you got. God said when you give your best, I decrease your time. God said what you thought was going to take this amount of time, I'm going to cut it in half. God said every word over your life that has cement in his feet. God said, I'm about to break the cement off your prophecy. I'm about to break the cement off your words. And I'm about to cause it to be a divine acceleration. I prophesy that divine acceleration is hitting you. The wings of God's love. The wings of God's power. God's giving you wings of acceleration. There's wings on that check. Wait. There's wings on that response. There's wings on that application. There's wings on that promotion. You got but I've got about 30 seconds to praise them for the wing. I don't I know that sounds weird, but God said praise you for the wings. Hey. I said praise them. I say, I say, yo, mount up as wings as eagles. You'll run, not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. Wait, I say, 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 wait, I say. Wait on, wait on, wait on, wait, hey, hey. Hey, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, you shall reap, you shall reap, you shall reap, you shall reap, if you think not, if you think not, hold on. God bless you tonight. Follow us on social media. Unity Chapel Church, connect with us, email us, because your wait time is coming to an end. Go ahead and musicians and praise them. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. See you soon. Hey, they're waiting on you. They're waiting on you. They're waiting on you. They're waiting on you. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. You're going to pull up to that office. That supervisor going to tell you, I've been waiting on somebody like you. I've been waiting on your gifts. I've been waiting on your talents. I've been waiting on you. Oh, 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 I've been waiting on you. Hey! Oh, he is waiting on you. That child, that hey! Oh, they are waiting on you. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting.